Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Peter Köppel. Nucleotide have been my life work and it is a pleasure to impart to you much of my knowledge. To give you a bit of background, I completed a PhD in biochemistry and immunology in 1978. I was trained in biochemistry with a special interest in clinical immunology at the Institute of Virology at the University of Zurich. I then worked as a researcher in osteoarthritis and osteoporosis at a pharmaceutical company in Basel. As managing director of Chemoforma and ProBio in Switzerland, I have led cell research and production of special nucleotide formulation for both animal and human nutrition for over 20 years. Altogether, I have been involved in over 400 ethical animal nutrition trials, many under EFSA protocols. These trials have been a strong and excellent basis for our development of nucleotide-based food supplement and human clinical trials conducted here in the UK and overseas. It takes many years to produce a piece of nutritional jigsaw and obtain scientific and nutritional acceptance for the nutrients. This is why nucleotides are nutrition's best kept secret. I hope that this seminar will help you to realize that nucleotides are the foundation of nutrition and by putting you in the picture about nucleotides and their role in the body, you will be able to use this knowledge to help your patients. I am also associated with Nucleotide Nutrition, a company which we collaborate on product development and grant-aided clinical research. Nucleotide Nutrition is also responsible for the distribution of these nucleotide food supplements in UK. Our hypothesis is many people's diet are deficient in correct blend of nucleotide. This presentation aims to demonstrate why the practitioners should consider whether the diet of their patient contain an appropriate level of all nucleotides to support their lifestyle and health. Nucleotides really are the forgotten nutrients. Nucleotide nutrition has been mostly neglected by the nutritional and regulatory experts. All food recommendations are based on the content of proteins, fats, sugar and micronutrients. Most of these micronutrients like vitamins, minerals and trace elements have been assigned recommended daily amounts, RDAs. A mi major micronutrient still not included in nutritional recommendations is nucleotides. Since they are foundation of many micro and macronutrients, nucleotides should be really be considered as micro micronutrients. Also, nucleotides have no RDA. They are a category in Parnats Commission regulation under nutrients of particular nutritional purpose and are supplemented into infant formula and some intensive care medical foods. You will see in the presentation that nucleotides are nutrition's best kept secret for all over the age of six months. This presentation has five sections leading up to how nutritional therapists can harness the power of nucleotides. First of all, I would like to take you to the basic about nucleotides and their biochemistry. All cells with the nucleus has the same composition. They contain DNA and can proliferate and divide. They can potentially provide all of their own requirements. Nucleotides are an integral part of the genetic information in each cell. Every cell contains 3 billion nucleotides in form of DNA. 
The body has a constant demand for new cell production. The formation of the new cell starts by the doubling of the DNA. The doubling of all cells required at least 10, 3 billion nucleotides. Nucleotides and protein synthesis are directly linked with each other. Messenger RNA, tRNA and ribosomes consist of nucleotides. Additionally, nucleotides are used as second messenger molecules in the cell, C, AMP, C, GMP, as cofactors of the metabolism of fat, carbohydrates and proteins, coenzyme A, FID, NID, and energy store as well as energy suppliers within the cell in form of ATP and GTP and UTP. Let's have a look at the structure of nucleotides. We differentiate between nucleobases, purines and pyrimidines, nucleosides and nucleotides. A nucleoside is formed when a pyrimidine or a purine base links to a pentose sugar via glucosidic bound. A nucleotide results when a phosphoric acid is ester esterified to the pentose of a nucleoside. In a DNA or RNA, the backbone is formed by connecting the sugar with the phosphoric acid and sugar and phosphoric acid and so on. The side chains are formed by the bases, like here the guanine or the adenine and so on. The types of nucleotides are purines and pyrimidines. We have five nucleotides used for the production of RNA and DNA. The purines are adenosine and guanosine, whereas the pyrimidines are cytidine, timidine and uridine. Nucleotides are imported from nearly all the processes in the body. They are the nutritional building blocks involved in all activities of our cells and metabolic processes. Nucleotides have a function in the energy transport, in the metabolism, in catalysis, regulations and structure. Additionally, there is a constant demand for new cell production. Nucleotides are an integral part of both DNA and RNA. But you have to be aware that there are 10 times more RNA than DNA in every cell. So the demand for nucleotides required for RNA component is about 10 times higher than the demand for DNA. The DNA, the genetic fingerprint, is present in all our body cells. Over a billion nucleotides are required to build one DNA helix. In a DNA, you have always a combination between guanosine and cytosine and adenosine and trimidine. In the body, you have different RNAs. You have the so-called ribosomal RNA, the messenger RNA and the transcription RNA. And they are all macromolecules made out from nucleotides. The RNA contains instead of tumidine, the nucleotide uracil. The multiplication of cell starts always with the doubling of the DNA in the cell nucleus during the phase called interphase. This is the longest phase in the whole cell multiplication and lasts around eight hours. One reason for the length of this phase is that the DNA of a normal cell consists about 3 billion nucleotides 
and the formation of every single nucleotide is a very complicated and long-lasting biochemical process. The cell multiplication starts with the unzipping of the helix structure itself, so that each side of the DNA strand is exposed. Nucleotides sourced from the pool pair up with the exposed nucleotides to create two identical strands, each containing one half of original DNA template. For a successful cell replication, a balanced pool of all five nucleotides needs to be available. There are three different sources for the nucleotides for the body. The first one is the so-called de novo synthesis, where nucleotides are newly formed from scratch. I will tell more in a later slide. The next source is the so-called salvage pathway, where nucleotides are recycled from destroyed cells. The third source are nucleotides from diet. Nucleotides absorbed from diet are mostly in form of nucleosides and then transported to the salvage pathway into the nucleotide pool in the body. Nucleotides from de novo synthesis can directly enter this nucleotide pool. Through the salvage pathways, nucleotides can also be excreted in humans in form of urate. Sources of nucleotides. The nucleotides can be synthesized from scratch using valuable raw materials. Additionally, this process requires a lot of time and energy. For example, the production of purines needs 14 biochemical steps, whereas the production of pyrimidines needs 10 biochemical steps. Additionally, a lot of energy and raw material are used for the production. As you see, the biosynthesis of purines is very complicated. But at the end of this first step of the biosynthesis, is a product called inosine monophosphate. The inosine monophosphate is the basic product for the production of both adenosine monophosphate and guanosine monophosphate. As you see from this picture, the biosynthesis of purines needs valuable raw materials. Folate, glutamine, aspartate, and glycines are very important for the synthesis. Another valuable resource is the so-called phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate, PRPP. This picture shows the important effect of folic acid on the biosynthesis of purines. It is a very complicated process but showing that folic acid affects the methylation process in the cell. The methylation of DNA can activate or inactivate the expression of some genes and is part of the so-called epigenetic. Now we step over to the biosynthesis of pyrimidines. And you see that the first step in the biosynthesis of pyrimidines are the so-called orotate. From the orotate, uridine is made. Uridine can directly be used in the formation of RNA, or it can be the starting point for both cytidine and timidine. As you see from this picture, Glutamine and aspartate is also indispensable for the synthesis of pyrimidines. And again, PRPP is also a valuable resource of pyrimidine synthesis. To summarize the biosynthesis of nucleotides, I would like to mention that the liver is the main 
organ to produce nucleotides. The liver can release these free bases and free nucleosides in the bloodstream, and these nucleotides then can be taken up by the cells throughout the body. The next source of nucleotides is the so-called salvage pathway. Nucleotides can be recycled from dead cells, but this process again requires time and energy. There is a need for an enzymatic degradation. There is a need of energy. It takes time and it has only a limited efficiency. This picture shows you the summary of the purine salvage pathway. It shows again that inosine is the key element for both the adenosine and the guanosine production. The salvage pathway is only a minor source for pyrimidines in humans. But nucleoside derivates of pyrimidines are important intermediates and nucleosides can easily be converted into nucleotides and then used by the cells. Part 2 of my presentation gives you an information about the nutritional effects of nucleotides. During times of high mental or physical activities like rapid development, immune challenges, gastric distress or physiological stress or high physical performance, the needs for nucleotides may increase drastically. How can we overcome the limitations of nucleotides during such periods of high demands? Pure and balanced nucleotides supplied from external sources needs to be, first, readily available for the body during this time of high demands. These sources need to provide all five nucleotides in a balanced amount. They need to be highly bioavailable, around 95%, and they need to provide the limiting nucleotides for specific requirements, for example, purines for intestinal development and repair. Nucleotides can also be obtained from the diet. But these nucleotides have only a limited nutritional availability because they are bound either in DNA or RNA. These molecules need to enzymatically degrade it in the intestine to set the nucleotides free. This process is so complicated that only about 5 to 10 percent of the nucleotides are really available for the body. This slide shows the limitation of the different nucleotide sources. The salvage pathway has only an efficiency of about 70 to 80 percent and needs dying cells for the supply of nucleotides. The de novo synthesis requires a lot of energy, raw material and time and as you see, to build up the purines, the body needs 14 biochemical steps, whereas to build the pyrimidines, 10 biochemical steps are required. Additionally, some of cells lack the potential to produce nucleotides. For example, the gastrointestinal cells, the mucosa cells, have only a limited capacity to produce nucleotides and cannot cover their needs. Immune competent cells like macrophages and TMP lymphocytes cannot produce nucleotides and also bifidobacteria cannot produce nucleotides. So the most important parts of the body for digestion and defense lack the potential to produce nucleotides. The uptake from the diet also shows some limitations. Most of Western diet contains low level of nucleotides and the nucleotides in food are protected and need many digestive steps. 
efficiency relies on efficient digesting system. As mentioned in the last slide, the absorption of nucleotides from food is very limited. The reason for this is that nucleotides are present in the cells as so-called nucleoproteins. The task for the proteins is to protect the nucleotides against digestion. This means only about 5 to 10 percent of the nucleotides from these nucleoproteins are available for absorption. To increase the absorption of nucleotides, a product needs to have pure forms of nucleotides or pure RNA. These nucleotides can be easily degraded to so-called nucleosides or nucleobases like purines or pyrimidines and both nucleosides and purines and pyrimidines can easily be absorbed. In this way you can increase the availability up to 80 to 90 percent. This is very important for nutritionists to know. In the next few slides I would like to give you an information about different nucleotide contents in different foods. I would like to compare the food which was eaten by our ancestors and the modern, modern food. What did the ancestors eat? They mostly eat food like berries, fruits, larvae, caterpillar and small animals. Only occasionally they have a big kill and when they kill the big animal they mostly eat the organ meat. All these living foods were excellent source of proteins and nucleotides. What is the situation today? Nucleotide rich food are hardly consumed today. Most of our food is very low in nucleotides because nucleotides are mostly found in organs or cells with a very high metabolic activity. Such organs are the intestine, the liver, the kidneys or the lungs of animals. But in the Western world, these animal parts were hardly consumed. The tables in the following slides show you the content of nucleotides in different food types. This slide shows you the nucleotide contents in vegetables and fruits. You see from the graph, this is measured as percentage of nucleotides in the dry matter, that the average of the nucleotides is very, very low in most of the uh, uh, fruits and vegetables. Only broccoli and cauliflower have a certain amount of nucleotides. Something else which you can see here, that purines and pyrimines are not really well balanced, but for a good cell multiplication, you need a really a balanced amount of purines and pyrimidines. This slide shows you the nucleotide content in beef. Compared to fruits and vegetables, the amount of nucleotides is very high, mostly in intestine, lung and liver. But the purines and pyrimidines are also here not really balanced. The same picture we found in pork meat. Again, intestine is quite high in nucleotides and the purines and the pyrimidines are not really balanced here too. This slide shows the nucleotide content per standard portion. The orange bars shows the nucleotide content in meat and the green bars shows the nucleotide in vegetarian sources. And you see again that meat parts are very high in nucleotides, whereas vegetarian food is very low in nucleotides. Only, again, broccoli, corn or tofu have an interesting amount of nucleotides. 
This slide shows you foods with the best balanced nucleotide. For an optimal DNA or RNA formation, an equal number of purines and pyrimidines is needed. But an equal number of purines and pyrimidines is only found in organs in which predominantly new cells are produced, like bone marrow or egg yolk. But in both items, the amount of nucleotides is extremely low. Meat parts like liver or steak have high total nucleotides, but the balance between purines and pyrimidines is really not optimal. As mentioned before, organ meats would provide the best option for an optimal nucleotide supplementation, but organ meats are seldom consumed in the modern Western diet. This means that the uptake of nucleotides from food has decreased over the last years, whereas the demand for nucleotides increased due to our hectic lifestyle. Consequently, only a supplementation of a balanced nucleotide supplement can redress a good balance. Here I would like to give you a few key points of nucleotide contents in food. The highest density of all nucleotides are found in organ meats. Muscle is high in purines, but very low in pyrimidines. Most plant-based food have a low nucleotide content except broccoli and mushrooms. Modern diet are inferior to paleo diet. The protected nature of nucleoproteins reduces the delivery of nucleotides from food and for malabsorber this is much higher. For people who have an inherent inability to synthesize pyrimidines, the knowledge of what food can deliver these types of nucleotides is key. For example, a portion of liver can deliver three times the level of pyrimidines than of tofu or steak, and over 400 times that of egg yolk. In the third part of my presentation, I would like to give you some information about the importance of nucleotides for health and well-being. The modern infant formulas today are all supplemented with nucleotides. The reason for this is that mother milk is very rich in nucleotides, whereas the milk, which is the basis of milk formula, is very low in nucleotides. And therefore, most of the infant formula producers supplement their infant formulas today with nucleotides. Nucleotides are very, very important for the development of a healthy gut. They promote the growth of good bacteria and they support the development of a healthy gastrointestinal cell. At the same time, nucleotides help the development of the immune system and the brain formation. These slides shows you the different amount of nutrients supplemented into milk formulas. This slide shows the nucleotide profiles in different infant formulas. As you can see, different researchers make different recommendations of nucleotide contents for infant formulas. We can say that the best is still mother milk and all the different recommendations never can catch up with mother milk because mother milk is able to adjust at the daily pattern or the daily need of, an, of, an, of a baby 
for an optimal growth and development. The main infant formula producers supplement nucleotides only in the first phase infant formula. This means only in the first six months. Afterwards, nucleotides are no more included in the infant formulas. But why they stop there? Because nucleotides are still needed for the development of brain, for the intestine and for the immune system. So in our opinion, nucleotides need to be supplemented also in the additional phases of a development of children. People with a very easy, low stress and easy life don't need additional nucleotides. The body can cover the nucleotides from the three mentioned sources, the novosynthesis, recycling and diet. Normally, an individual needs around one to two gram of nucleotides per day. A hectic lifestyle, stress or intensive sport, inflammation or disease status increase the metabolic activities of the cell in the body. And therefore the need for nucleotides increases gradually and very, goes very high level. In such a condition, the body can no more cover the nucleotide demand by the natural sources and therefore, in this case, the nucleotides get conditionally essential. As you can see from this slide, the body has a sort of nucleotide pool which can supply nucleotides for a general health, for a normal performance, for amelioration of a normal stress, and for the development of the body. This slide shows that under a challenge of a high stress or an infection, the nucleotides are flowing in direction stress or in direction infection, and the pool of nucleotides is empty and can no more provide nucleotides into the performance or into the development. This you can also see if you are sick and you want to make a sport, you will not be able to do it. You see, only a supply of nucleotides in an available good form, again, fills up the nucleotide pool and you have enough nucleotides to fight against infections and improve the immune response. To overcome stress and repair the body. And to optimize the development and repair of organs and tissue and at the same time to give an optimal performance. This means only an optimal diet or a dietary nucleotide supplement can really provide the nucleotides to fill up this nucleotide pool. As already mentioned, it is important to know that some cells or organs in the body lack the ability to produce nucleotides. These are, for example, bone marrow derived cells like lymphocytes, macrophages, and red blood cells. Intestinal cells, because the production of nucleotides in these cells is too low to cover their needs. The cells of the intestinal flora, like for example bifidobacteria, and some brain cells. As mentioned, lymphocytes, macrophages and red blood cells lack the ability to produce nucleotides. These cells have a rapid turnover and therefore they have an increased nucleotide requirement. First, they have an increased energy demand which can only be covered by ATP, GTP, UTP and they need nucleotides as precursors of RNA and DNA because the cell multiplication 
is very high and at the same time these cells need to produce proteins like antibodies to defend the body. There is an increasing number of research ongoing on the effect of nucleotide supplementation on immune cells. Here I have a list of effects of nucleotides in immunity, but I will only concentrate on those effects which are of most interest for nutritional therapists. As an example, here, supplementary nucleotides increase the proliferation of lymph nodes and lymphocytes. Research could show that the supplementation of nucleotides increased the activity of natural killer cells and supported the activation of macrophages. Both cells are very, very important in the defense against cancer. It could also be shown that supplementation of nucleotides improved the resistance to microbial challenge and therefore we found less mortality in animals infected, for example, with Staphylococcus aureus. Nucleotides were also shown to increase the production of antibodies in the body. And a supplementation of nucleotides could be shown to increase the total number of leukocytes and mostly of neutrophils after an infection. This is important because the neutrophils are important for cleaning the debris of cells destroyed by the immune system. Nucleotides also play an important role on the integrity of intestines. The size of the intestine is about 400 square meter, the size of a tennis court, and all the cells of the intestines are replaced within about three to six days. We found that nucleotide supplementation has a profound effect on gut cells. We could monitor an increased weight of intestinal mucosa. We found an accelerated healing of lesions, and this is mostly important for celiac disease. We found that the intestinal villi have about 25% higher than the control group, as you can see in the pictures beside. We also found a higher activity of intestinal enzymes and therefore improved uptake of nutrients. We run more than 400 ethical animal studies to prove the effect of nucleotides, which resulted in a reduction of antibiotic use in animals. Chronic diarrhea have a profound negative effect on the intestinal mucosa. We found that dairy nucleotides are important for the repair of a damaged intestinal mucosa. We found that dietary nucleotide supplementation accelerated the healing of lesions, mostly in the gut, leading to less gut infections. We found by supplementing nucleotides an increased villi length of 25%. This means dietary nucleotides are necessary also for the maintenance of a normal intestinal structure even in healthy animals and therefore also in humans. Nucleotides are a growth factor for different bifidobacteria. An increased number of bifida bacteria will lead to a lower pH in the gut and therefore also to lower amount of E. coli in the gut. We have seen the effect of nucleotides on the immune system and on the gut. But nucleotides have a lot of different roles, for example, on metabolismus, 
on the transfer of energy, on hormone signals, on tissue repair, DNA repair and protein synthesis. The modern science classifies nucleotides as conditionally essential. This means under certain conditions the body is not able to cover the needs for nucleotides by the own production but it needs to be supplied by the food. Such peak requirements are, for example, rapid growth, infection, disease, stress, or trauma. And the sites of the highest requirement during this time are the immune system or the intestinal system. All high physiological challenges increase the metabolic activity of the body. This leads to a significant increase of DNA and RNA synthesis and therefore to an increased demand of nucleotides. All energy in the body is transported in form of ATP or GTP or UTP. These are all nucleotides. A considerable amount of ATP is used for muscle work, metabolismus, wound healing, and red blood cell formation. Here is a picture of the ATP. Other forms of energy molecules are GTP and UTP. Nucleotides are also important for hormone signal transduction in form of cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP is a so-called second messenger and was discovered in 1958 by Earl Sutherland. He discovered that the action of the hormone epinephrine was enhanced by an increased concentration of cyclic AMP. In this case, epinephrine was the primary hormone and the cyclic AMP mediated the action of the primary hormone into the cell. This picture is a neat diagram of the signal transduction. You see that the hormone, the first messenger, binds to a receptor in the cell membrane, leading either to a stimulation or an inhibition of the so-called G protein. This, in turn, leads to either an increase or a decrease of cyclic AMP and therefore triggering the expression of genes. Cyclic AMP has an important function in the breakdown of glycogen to glucose in the muscle cell for energy. This is very important for sport people. The first picture shows that cyclic AMP is responsible to release the inactive protein kinase A to the active form. The active form of protein kinase A to the action of other enzymes leads to a release of glucose from glycogen and at the same time it lowers the action of glycogen synthesis. Nucleotides are also very important for the function of hormones. All hormonal activities in the body are under genetic control. During stressful conditions, some genes in the DNA can be switched on according to the needs of the body. The first action of these activated genes is the formation of a so-called messenger RNA, the transcription of the information. The information on the messenger RNA is then translated into the peptide or protein, for example, in a hormone. The whole process needs a huge amount of nucleotides. Beside the messenger RNA, a long sequence of nucleotides carrying the information for a peptide or hormone, two other macromolecules 
made up from nucleotides are involved in the protein synthesis, the so-called tRNA and the ribosomes. So, the availability of nucleotides is crucial for the endocrine system and the function of the hormones. Cortisol is possibly the most interesting hormone in terms of stress for the body. It prepares the body for a life-threatening situation. It stimulates the formation of glucose in the liver and activates the anti-inflammatory pathway. The effect of cortisol is designed for short and highly dangerous situations. Exposure to cortisol for long periods of time has a variety of negative effects like decreased immunity, increased abdominal fat, a breakdown of muscle, bone and connective tissue. Nucleotides have the ability to lower the threshold for stress and reduce the buildup of cortisol. Stressful situation including strenuous training, reduce liver function. This in turn reduces the release of nucleotides by the liver into the bloodstream because liver is one of the highest production of nucleotides in the body. This makes the eternal supply of nucleotides from the diet so important for the cells origin originating from the bone marrow since this are cells that are unable to produce their own nucleotides. Our own research can confirm the impact of nucleotide supplementation on lowering the threshold of stress in athletes after moderate endurance and high intensive exercise. Nucleotides are very important for wound healing. The first step in a wound healing is the cleansing of the wound by macrophages. Only when the wounds are clean from all debris, macrophages are able to send out some cytokines to activate epithelial cells to close the wound. Additionally, a considerable amount of ATP are turned over during wound healing. There are three different stages of stress. The first is a short time stress. This is called alarm. Here you have a production of adrenaline which prepares the body to react appropriately for a dangerous situation. The next is a continuous stress and here you have already the, a depletion of, a, of the resources. The next step where you have a permanent stress leads to an exhaustion and this really leads to a permanent and long-term damage and also the immune system is then exhausted. And only the last two stages are really dangerous for the body and needs uh, a treatment. And we have seen with nucleotides you can lower the threshold for stress. We assessed the effect of nucleotides on stress by using a trial with oxidative stress. This means we released oxygen radicals by PUFAS. So we were using three different groups in pigs. The first group, as you see, were getting the energy mostly out of starch. Whereas the other group, a part of the starch was replaced by linseed oil. And linseed oil is very high in PUFA. And you see down that the energy from the uh, PUFAS is 2.9 in the control group, whereas 20.9% is in the oil group, com energy comes out of PUFAS. And this release is uh, an oxidative stress. In the third group, we combined oil, linseed oil, together with the nucleotides. So we have two groups, a control group where we have no nucleotides, we have an oil group, no nucleotides, and we have a group where oil is combined with nucleotide extract. What we did, we isolated lymphocytes 
and we take, took out the DNA and put it on an electrophoresis. And as the DNA of a normal cell is about one meter long, these nucleotides cannot move in an electric field. But as soon as you have damaged DNA and smaller parts, these smaller parts can move and form a tail in a form of a comet. And we have seen normally that about 40% of the DNA is in the head, whereas here in this picture, 60% of the DNA is in the tail. This means here that you have 60% of the DNA is damaged. Here you see the results of the trial we did. As you see in the first day, all the three groups, the control group, the oil group, the oil plus nucleotide group, had about the same amount of damage. All of them, they have about 4% damage. You see the control group had 95.8, the oil group 95.8, and the oil plus nucleotides have 95.7% in the head. Whereas, after 21 days, you see, you have still the same level in the control group, 96.4, this is about 4% of damage. But in the oil group, you see you have only 85.3% in the head. This means you have 15% of damaged DNA. Now, when you compare the nucleotide oil group, you see that we go back to 95.4%. This means here the damage, which was done by PUFAS could be fully repaired by nucleotides. Here you see the picture of the, of the electrophoresis and you see in the control group you find all the, the color in the head. Whereas in the oil group you see really a tail and in the oil plus nucleotides you find again everything in the head. This means that nucleotides really can help to overcome the damage which are caused by oxygen radicals in the DNA, provided that the nucleotides are high enough in the, in the, in the food. Now I would like to give you some information about protein synthesis. Most of you are not aware of the importance of nucleotides for the protein synthesis. But when you see the transcription of or from the DNA on the RNA needs nucleotides. And as soon as you have an RNA built, they are transported out from the nucleus to the ribosomes. And on the ribosomes, they are fixed. The next step is then the tRNA transport amino acids to the binding sites where the different amino acids are connected. And so you have a long, finally a long chain of amino acids. But this process additionally needs energy and this again is supplied by nucleotides in form of ATP or GTP. As you can see, we have here five different uh, uh, molecules which needs nucleotides. You have the messenger RNA, you have the DNA, you have the tRNA, you have the ribosomes, and you have the ATP. A lot of athletes are using amino acids to increase their muscle mass, but very few of them really realize that the protein synthesis needs urgently some nucleotides, as we have seen before. The protein synthesis is basically depending on the DNA, on messenger RNA, on tRNA, on ribosomes, and an ATP. And only when you have a combination between enough nucleotides plus enough amino acids, you can really have an effect on the muscle formation. Until recently, food and energy was always in shortage. Our ancestors where you uh, were not always were always having enough to eat. So the body is trained to use all nutrients and energy as efficiently as possible. And if the energy or nutrients cannot be directly used, 
the body is going to store it as fat reserve for bad times. We have here done a trial on pigs, and you see we have a, con a group with the control feed where we have no nucleotides added. And in the other group called Ascogen, we had a product where, which is very, very rich in nucleotides, and you see that the back fat in the control group was very thick. This means these animals stored most of their energy in form of fat. Whereas in the other group, and we have the same condition here, the nucleotides help to produce uh, uh, proteins. And you see that the meat part is much bigger here and the fat part is very low. This means as soon as you have enough energy transport in the body, protein can be built and instead to store it as fat, the product, is, uh, the, the energy and the nutrients is going into the production of meat. And this we can see in the same in humans, where nucleotides can help to produce lean meat instead of fat. Most of the people are aware of ATP and maybe GTP, but very few people know that UTP and CTP are very vital intermediates in the synthesis of pyrimidine sugar and pyrimidine lipids involved in the protein glycosylation and membrane biosynthesis. Uridine and cytidine are fundamental components of DNA and RNA and are indispensable precursors of the biosynthesis of phospholipids and glycolipids, which includes phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylethanolamine, phosphatidylserine, ganglioceids, seroboceids, and myelin. So this is very important for membrane function. This paper shows the effect of nucleotides on improved lipid tolerance in infants. Infants with nucleotide-rich food had a higher LCAT activity and APOA activity than those with a nucleotide-free formula. This makes them much more uh, tolerant against dietary lipid. Several research showed that nucleotides are really important for the development of the brain and also for the learning uh, ability. It could be demonstrated that rats fed a nucleotide supplemented uh, diet could remember much better on a, in a in a labyrinth to get the food. This means that nucleotides are very important to increase the brain function and the ability of learning. And we have also seen that the memory, there is a memory effect for older animals and older people. In this slide, I would like to show you the effect on, of nucleotides on brain cells. Most of the people have the impression that the brain development is finished after about two to three years. But new research has shown that the plasticity of the brain is very big, even in old age. But some of the brain cells are not able to produce nucleotides. And the supplementation of nucleotides will have a big impact on the plasticity of the brain. This means not only in young children, you have an effect on nucleotides and the brain formation, but even in the old age, nucleotides are very important. And here in this trial, we can, it would be shown that oral administration of nucleotides daily was associated with a reduction of age-related deterioration of brain morphology and memory. This means that nucleotides are important <laughs> for children, for the brain formation, but also in old age to restore memory and learning. As I mentioned already before, nucleotides are called conditionally essential nutrients. Situation where the synthesis of nucleotides is not sufficient for the normal function of the body are certain disease state, states some periods of limited nutrient intake, a permanent stress, 
but also rapid growth and additionally also some per high performance like in athletes and very important is to know that most of all the people have a too low intake of nucleotides because of damage in the gut and therefore in this case also nucleotides are essential. Most of the people are today aware of the importance of, of methylation in, in, uh, in the body, but very few knows that methylation really affects the protein synthesis. For example, in food, folate and methionine can directly affect the de novo synthesis of nucleotides, and mostly the pyridine synthesis can be impaired by a wrong methylation. And, f and lead to, to a, a, a drain of the pool of nucleotides. And as I mentioned before, pyrimidines are always insured in food and needs to produce in the body. And when the body cannot produce enough pyrimidines, you will have an impairment of the immune system because DNA expression is impaired. You have a lower uh, cell multiplication you have a poor protein synthesis and or even the whole hormone uh, formation is also impaired. This means the therapist should really consider uh, adding nucleotide supplemented to the patient's protocol. This slide show the effect of folic acid and methionine on the production of purines and pyrimidines and it also shows how important methylation reaction is in this uh, whole process. And only when you have enough folic acid, methionine and methylation process, both purines and pyrimidines can be really formed. The most important here is the formation of pyrimidines because purines are always, as I have seen, uh, shown before, available in food and feed whereas the pyrimidines are always low. So the important part here is to improve the pyrimidine biosynthesis. And this is clearly shown here in this picture. As mentioned before, most of the cells or organs in the body can produce nucleotides. But there are exceptions where nucleotides cannot be formed or nucleotides cannot be formed in a sufficient amount. These are especially intestinal mucosa cells. These are the bone marrow cells, like the red blood cells, but also leukocytes, especially lymphocytes cannot produce nucleotides and the erythrocytes cannot produce nucleotides. Additionally, we have seen that brain cells or some brain cells are not able to really make nucleotides. It is well known that nucleotide supplementation is essential in early life, but few people know that nucleotide supplementation also can be of big advantage for adults. And this has been proven by scientific reviews. It has been proven by using of nucleotide supplements in intensive care trials, for example, IMPACT, where they could use it to shorten the repair of wounds. A lot of people are aware that most of the infant formulas are supplemented with nucleotides today, but this is only in the first phase, and afterwards, nucleotides are not really used in, in infant formulas. And it is also shown in animal study that nucleotides, not only in the early life, is really important, but also in the later phase of the state of the life, it's important to improve performance and also health. And this can be directly transferred to the human uh, sector. Colostrum is very, very rich in nucleotides. 
and also breast milk later on is rich in nucleotides and this could be shown in different uh, uh, trials in the early 50s and when uh, companies started to make infant formula the first effect of the infant formula was that these uh, young children had a bad development of the immune system they had problems with digestion and they have the problems with brain development researchers checked the difference between milk and colostrum and found that mostly nucleotides were lacking in the in the milk and then they started to supplement in milk formulas with nucleotides and in this way they could improve all the three effects also they have improved gut function they have improved immune function and brain fun function and later on research went further and looked also at the effect of nucleotides in young children and also there they found that both immunity and intestine could profit from the uh, supplementation of nucleotides. Later on, research expanded the use of nucleotides on adults. And here they concentrated mostly on effects on immunity and on intestinal tract. There were several trials done in university but also several trials were done performed by nucleotide nutrition and probio. For example, one of the trials was done at the London University with Professor Danzi on IBS. This was a peer-reviewed double-blind trial with the months of washout. The trial was done in a way that we had a control group and a trial group and they had a placebo controlled uh, a placebo giving to the control group and the, uh, the product giving to the trial group for two months. Then we had a, a stop for two for one month as a washout period and then the whole group was turned. The control group was then the trial group and the trial group was then the control group. The results which we have found was that from seven parameters, four were significantly improved, whereas the other three were improved, but not significantly. So this means that the trial showed that nucleotides were as good as therapeutic applications. Another trial which we did was at the University in Bath with Professor McNaughton. Here we studied the effect of high performance on immunity. In this trial, the athletes has to go on a, on a bike for 60 minutes on a very high performance. And then we measured the amount of IgA in the mouse. And we measured also the cortisol level in the blood. After these 60 minutes, the amount of IgA in the mouth uh, lowered drastically by 90%. But when we gave the nucleotides, this decrease was less pronounced. At the same time, the cortisol level increased in the control group also, but giving nucleotides, this increase was also lowered. And the same effect we found also in animal studies which we did or in other parts of Europe. Then a second trial in Bath University, we studied the effect of nucleotides on cholesterol level. And we found that the total cholesterol level was not changed, but we found a shift from LDL to HDL. This means the control group had higher LDL, whereas the, the group supplemented with nucleotides, the amount of HDL increased significantly after, six, after 60 days. Our own uh, research focused on liver, on lipid metabolisms, and an immune system. And we did it both in human and in animal trials. 
we have seen a very in, uh, good effect on the liver. Even so, liver can produce nucleotides by themselves and even so high that it can supply other organs in the body. But under certain circumstances, the own production of the liver is impaired drastically. And this will then infect the lipid metabolism. And at the same time, liver is very important for the immune system. And in the immune system, we have seen mostly an effect on humoral immunity. This means when we have vaccinations, we see an increase of antibody production. We see an effect on cellular immunity. And there we have mostly looked on the macrophages because the macrophages are the, the turn on or the but the starting point for the whole immune, immune system, the macrophages are always the first who catch a, a, a foreign particle and then activate the rest of the immune system. And with these effects on the immunity, we have a higher uh, resistance against pathogens. Nucleotide supplementation has a profound effect on the liver function. We found that nucleotides help to recover from liver injuries. We also have seen effect on detoxification of toxins in the liver and that improvement by the nucleotides. Anecdotally, we have seen this in a, in a tests which we did in uh, Hungary. I was asked to have, help them to solve a problem where uh, animals were inadvertently fed with a toxin containing feed. What they found is that the normal, instead to have the normal level of 300 gram after three months, it was the, with this uh, toxin containing feed, the liver weight was only 110 gram. Now they ask us how we can solve the problem and we recommended them to include nucleotides in the, in the feed. And when they did it, the liver weight was instead of 110 gram, it was about 320 gram. This means they had the normal liver. This means the body is able with the support of, uh, the liver is able with the support of nucleotides to restore damaged liver. The anecdotal trials on animals, which I mentioned before, was also supported by some trials, not done by us, but in, in the USA, on liver injuries. And there they showed exactly the same results. In this trial, we measured the effect of nucleotides on detoxification of toxins. And here, the toxins were measured on the uh, level of DNA damage. When you have T2 toxin, for example, you have a really drastic uh, damage in the DNA, and when you and the, but the body is able to repair this, provided that enough nucleotides are available immediately. This means the supplementation of nucleotides can help to restore the DNA. And in this way, we could reduce the DNA damage to the normal level compared to the toxin without toxin damage without nucleotides. Even for the recovery of stress, nucleotides are very important. In this research trial, it could be shown that nucleotides are really have a really profound protective effect on markers of the immune response in athletes after a strenuous exercise. And therefore, they could help to protect against the apoptosis effect of, uh, of strenuous uh, exercise and reduce the apoptosis. All the trials I have showed here were peer-reviewed trials and they appeared in well-respected journals. I would like to summarize the effect of nucleotide supplementation. Nucleotides are supporting a recovery from major injuries. 
Nucleotides help to overcome infections. Nucleotides supplement a rapid growth. Nucleotides are really important for the liver function. Nucleotides are very, very important during uh, times of high intensive stress and under stressful conditions. Nucleotides can significantly improve the immune function. Nucleotides are very important also for elderly people, with, which have mostly an impaired ability of extracting nucleotides from food, and most of them they have an impaired methylation, leading to a lower production of pyrimidines. As nucleotides required, or the building of nucleotides require a lot of time and energy, people can save energy and time for the immune reaction. And at the same time, uh, nucleotides can be helping to accelerate all the active processes and save energy. It is generally recognized that building nucleotides by scratch requires a lot of energy and time. The recommended daily requirement is more than 2 grams per day for a healthy individual. But normally, the diet of an average person only contains between 1 and 2 grams of nucleotides per day. This means the average person is deficient because of lack of high-density nucleotide foods, especially foods with a high proportion of uh, pyrimidines, whereas purines nucleotides are rel relatively plentiful in our diet. And mostly people in high disease stage under abnormal stress have a higher requirement than this and it becomes essential to eat food that contains a good balance of pyrimidine nucleotides like liver, eggs, bone marrow broth, or tofu. As the content of Western diet is mostly deficient in essential, essential nucleotides, therapists should consider supplementing their clients with diet with a minimum of 500 mg of nucleotides per day Supplementing the diet with purified nucleotides reduces the proportion of requirement required for the body to manufacture and accelerate an active process and saves energy. Part 5 is a short summary of this review. Nucleotides are a really important micronutrient and are the key nutrient for many biological processes. Nucleotides are the building blocks for both the DNA and the RNA. 
certain cells or organs are fully depending on dietary nucleotides like immune system, the immune function needs nucleotides, energy and recovery, and also oxygenated blood, this means erythrocytes needs nucleotides, the intestinal mucosa grows and repair process need nucleotides, and some parts of the intestinal flora like bifidobacteria are depending on dietary supplementation of nucleotides. Nucleotides are also important for other organs or metabolic processes, like for the liver function. The liver function, even they can produce more nucleotides, needs under certain conditions uh, additional nucleotides supplemented by the food. Nucleotides are very, very important for the protein synthesis, as we have seen already before, and nucleotides help to overcome the impact of stress, as shown in the trial with the oxidative stress. Nucleotides are involved in different uh, roles in the body, like energy metabolism, they are involved in the enzymatic regulations. We have several enzymes which are nucleotide uh, components. They are involved in the signal transduction, um, like the CAMP or CGMP, and they are structural component of coenzymes. This slide shows you as a therapist what you should consider about nucleotide supplementation. There are several nucleotide products on the market, but if you consider to supply your patient with a nucleotide nutritional supplement, you have to consider what I have stated here. A product should contain a mixture of five nucleotides. It should be produced under high standard condition. It should be produced under ISO norms, it should be vegan, it should be con uh, have a kosher and halal certification. It should be made of purified and tested uh, material. It should be free of allergen, gluten and lactose. And it should be easy to be added to a practitioner's protocol and it should be clinical tested. I would like to thank you very much for your attention. As you may have seen, nucleotides are really my passion. I worked now for over 25 years on nucleotides, both in animals and in humans, and I have seen such a tremendous effect of nucleotides, and I am sure that we can see in the next time much more results coming from other uh, sources to show what nucleotides can really do. And you have to really to understand nucleotides are the basis of all the processes in the, in the body and therefore they are really important to consider in your therapeutic approach. And if you have more if you need more information please contact us under, the, under the, the, the contact address below.